Welcome to your innerverse. Greetings, dear humans. My name is Chance, and you're listening to Innerverse. This is a podcast about unleashing your inner ninja wizard, superhuman, higher self. Well, that's what it's about for me anyway, but I guess you don't have to be a ninja wizard if you want to be something else. But I want you to know that whatever it is that you dream about doing or being, you're already it. What I'm talking about is one of the greatest maxims you can ever install into your consciousness software the knowing that all is self that means that even if something only exists in your imagination you are that imagining insofar as you're able to understand the experience of it because what are you really other than experiences does it matter the physical tangible reality of those experiences and can you in the use of your imagination as a tool that it was truly meant to be, have an infinitely powerful quantum technology that allows you to travel through space, time, and do any form of construction of forms at all in our material plane. That's what your imagination is actually able to do. But for most of us, we really only use it to imagine that we want a life with more love, a higher expression of our creative thoughts, and the freedom to share these things in an environment of fearlessness. But um, if we actually could imagine beyond even those things, then we might uh, start moving into a, some extremely interesting reality tunnels, like our guest today, who is named MJ Lightningbug. She is a consciousness exploring artist who has taken the deep plunge into the world of music festival live painting. So she's on that circuit, and it's a lifestyle that I've always been pretty attracted to because of the direct way that such individuals are able to channel their imagination into a livelihood, and they support themselves creatively. Of course, it can't be done alone, really. They're not supporting themselves completely because an artist is nothing without an audience that finds value in what they do. So uh, it takes a community, and that's what's so cool about having the music festival community as an artist to tap into. And uh, this conversation is going to really clearly demonstrate the infinite worth of a person like MJ, who openly and honestly talks about her path and her inspirations and intentions behind the life of being a life painter. And it's probably a pretty wild life if I had to imagine. And you can be prepared for some awesome music festival stories and synchronicities. And on the subject of music festivals, if you happen to be around Missouri and you're listening to this before the big old solar eclipse that's about to happen in a few days, you should come out to this festival called Darkening of the Sun. I'm going to link to it on the website on the episode notes, and it's not that far out of St. Louis. You'll have a chance to spend the weekend camping and celebrating with a tribe of like-minded celestial observers all the way up to the big shebang on Monday where the festival will be graced by viewing of the full-on total solar eclipse. I actually just put out a bonus episode where I talked to um, my good buddy Chris Abert from Dream Nexus Podcast, where we discussed this, the uh, the eclipse itself and a lot of other interesting metaphysical stuff, um, and also Darkening of the Sun, because he's been involved with organizing that and promoting that. I really hope to see some of you guys there. If you are going, you should let me know in a comment or something, and who knows, maybe we can like run into each other. We probably will anyway. It probably won't be that huge. Maybe it will, though. I don't know. It's probably going to be awesome. So anyway, speaking of uh, checking the episode notes for links, you can also find links to MJ's online store where you can get her incredible psychedelic paintings, so many eyeballs, so many beautiful textured squiggles and movement and so much metaphysical symbolism in her painting it's just i was immediately hooked whenever i saw her on instagram i actually just hit her up and was like can we do a podcast that you know you don't know me and she was like yeah dude so i'm really really grateful to her for coming on and if you want to see our beautiful faces there's a video version of this episode so you can find that in the links on episode notes as well 
if you're listening right now through iTunes or SoundCloud or something like that, I actually do recommend checking out the YouTube version of this particular podcast because there's a part near the end where you're not only you're not going to be able to see what we're talking about per se um, because we're going to be talking about some of the paintings in her studio and she's showing us sneak peeks of things she's working on. I'll definitely link to some images of other artwork by her on the episode notes on my dun 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 brand spanking new website yeah that's what i've been waiting to tell you guys that i'm insanely excited about i have just published a brand new version of interversepodcast.com where you can find all the episodes of the show links to various social media pages where i'm present and a way to contact me and also a snazzy page where all the past creative human beings who have been featured on the show are collected it's kind of like pokemon i'm trying to catch all the visionary artists and musicians and podcasters that i like and put them on this page i hope you go and take a leisurely gander at my new online home base and maybe even find an episode page to share or a new social uh, media platform to engage with me on like i said i'd extra love it to have comments if you're coming to uh, darkening out of the sun or just some feedback on the new website you can comment on things on the website so that's cool another thing you could do from the website if you decide to go check it out is click on the link to itunes and leave interverse a five-star review that would be awesome because it helps new people find the show and if we can crank up the number of five-star reviews you all leave and it'll only take you like 60 seconds to do it um, then we will have way more people getting exposed to the podcast are looking for this type of information and the more of us there are the better for some reason um and also i just really like seeing those five star reviews pile up it's like this kind of digital crack so thank you in advance for all the wonderful delicious stars that you're about to leave soon i'll have enough stars to fuel my time machine don't worry about that though and i promise i won't do anything bad with it I just need your stars. And of course, I can't finish an intro to a podcast without asking you to consider checking out my Patreon page, which is linked from my new website also. And you can check out all the reward tiers. If you've never heard of Patreon, it's actually a super cool platform that allows creators to receive direct support from their audience and give them customized rewards for that. So it's crowdfunding with perks for the people funding it. On this show, I vowed to never get into advertising or really to do anything solely for money. So I'm never going to hold you guys captive to a speech about why I think you should try some kind of super special mattress that emits hypno waves that help you fall asleep instantly and have guaranteed amazing lucid dreams. There probably isn't even a mattress like that out there. And as cool as it would be, I still wouldn't take them on as an advertiser because I want this podcast to be 100% voluntary listener support only. So if you've ever thought you really wished you could improve your karmic standing with Zeus, Jehovah, Thor, King Kong, all of those guys at the same time for only like $3 a month, now you can. It's really easy to sign up at patreon.com forward slash interverse and your support will help me get a new computer someday, which is going to make a huge difference in my ability to make cool videos. And if you do sign up for $3 a month, which you could also do one or two or five, but at $3 or more, you have access to the season one archives of the show, which um, not as good as season three, in my opinion, but that's because maybe I'm critical of myself. But if you're interested in seeing the origins of the podcast, because I think some of those conversations definitely had some really good metaphysical morsels and truth nuggets to get into. Um, so if you you know if that sounds interesting, you can actually find a link through my website to the entire archive, uh, the post on Patreon where I put the archive, which all you have to do is sign up and super easy to do, and yeah you'll be you'll be energetically connected to this here conversational chariot, and we're gonna travel through the space stars together and become infinite super luminous creator divinities and have our own planets and use them to play pool but non-destructively. I don't know. I've really gone on way long, longer than I need to, right? And I think it's high time we speak to her visionary, psychedelic highness, the painter, the one and only, MJ Lightning Bug. Check the episode notes for links to everything and the music in this podcast, which is from a recent mixtape 
not really a mixtape, maybe it's a live set actually, released by Wolf Tech. I do recommend checking out Wolf Tech. Super weird, if you couldn't t- tell from the uh, recordings of the music that are playing in this intro. So check him out, follow him, follow the links to YouTube where you can see the episode in video form, and we'll get onto it. I wholeheartedly thank you for checking out Innerverse Podcast. Now let's go get inspired by the whimsical world of MJ Lightning Bug. Open your heart chakras, third eye chakras, and all the other chakras, and even the ones we don't know about to send love and welcome to MJ Lightning Bug. Hey. What's up? What's up, homie? Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, So you were just getting back from a music festival, but I didn't actually ask what festival it was because I was wanting you to tell me all about it right here now. So uh, where did you go? I went to a first-time festival called Future Dream um, at a place called Waxwing Studios over in South Haven, Michigan, so it's on the lower west side of the state, Um, and it was really good. It was really small, Um, so there were a lot of local uh, talent there, lots of like Michigan local musicians. I was actually the only painter (laughs) there, so that was kind of cool. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Uh that is kind of my favorite type of festival. Whenever it's uh, a certain size, it's just the perfect level of synchronicity that's possible because there's a lot of people there, but still there's so many people there that when um, kind of crazy coincidences occur with you and your friends, then it's way more improbable because there are at least a decent chunk of people there. But then when you get like, if you have like massive festivals, of course, when you have magic synchronicities in a throng of 16,000 people, that's even weirder. But um, what's nice about festivals of that size is the community vibe is so strong usually and everyone's watching out for each other. It's uh, no, usually nobody dies. <laughs> yeah. No, there was, there, there was no crazy um, out of control situations really, at least that I was aware of um, at the festival. Everybody was having a good time and, you know, was able to keep it together <laughs> pretty well. Um, but still, you know, hardy hardy and do do what they were gonna do well maybe you just didn't see it because you were um a certain frequency and so you didn't attract the uh the chaos as much true true um that is possible uh i mean it was it was so small that the whole campsite you could see the whole thing from where you were at we were right in the middle of it too um and so you know you could see the from one end to the other it was just maybe about I don't know, 50 feet <laughs> each way. Wow. So, so it's like a solo stage type of jam. Yep. Yep. There's a, a stage inside the barn where there's, you know, the late night electronic bump in music. And then there was a, a physical stage outside um, where like some of more the like instrumental bands and they did have some DJs out there, but so um, like Drew Foria and friends played and Desmond Jones played and these are some Michigan local bands. Um, it was really good. I actually got to perform on stage too. That was kind of cool. Oh, you um, got to paint on stage? No, I uh, I write rap <laughs> as oh. like my way of journaling. Um, and uh, Drew Drew Foria uh, came up to me and 
was just like, Hey, yeah. Do you want to sit in on our, on our uh, set? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I, I actually got to go up on stage and spit some rhymes. <laughs> it was pretty cool. Did somebody get like a decent video of that? Oh yeah. Yeah. My, my homie Kate was there and she, I was like, Oh, make sure you get the video. And so she did. And yeah, we I should put it up share on that Facebook. with the episode. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll send you the video. You can that totally awesome. put it up. Yeah. I, I, um, I wouldn't say that I'm like a good rapper or anything, but whenever I'm really opened up and, uh, like all my shockers are, so to speak, are like clear and firing. Um, it's really easy to just like start rhyming and being really silly and having fun or saying something that you really mean and feel. It's kind of crazy how it flows out. It's almost like, um, you just sort of stop and watch it come out whenever you improvise that kind of thing. It's, it's a good gauge of where you're at, uh, in consciousness, I think your ability to just sort of drop into an imaginative flow of that nature. And if you can, then you're probably in pretty good tune with self. And if uh, that's hard or daunting, um, at least in my experience, that means I need to like meditate or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And um, after we did a little bit of jam, because he had me come in during one of their songs. Um, so I like, heard the songs and the lyrics and everything. And then after the jam, he went off to do a workshop and I was like, okay, I'm going to write an extra verse that, you know, fits. I mean, cause the whole thing did fit pretty well with their song. I was like, I'm going to write another verse just intentionally for this song that I'm sitting it on and like just flew out really fast and was just kind of practicing it with some of my friends there. And then we did it and it, it just, it was beautiful. It really, it was just awesome. Spontaneous um, creativity is the most <laughs> fun thing to get up to with friends. Right. And so then all night and like half the people who watched it didn't realize that I was also the painter. <laughs> so then later people are coming up to me while I'm painting. They're like, oh my God, you are the rap girl. <laughs> like, I need to shake your hand. I was like, wow. Yeah, that was, that was me. <laughs> so now you're going to be getting like asked to join bands and shit. <laughs> yeah, they, they made that joke. They're like, you're going to be headlining both music festivals as a musician and as a painter. I was like, oh gosh, that just sounds like quite the experience. <laughs> and you didn't even really have to uh, put in all that much extra effort. You just like, right place, right time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was, it was actually perfect. Um, as we talked about with little festivals and synchronicity is there was just like a few things I had asked the universe for, for this festival. And all of those things happened. I had a, I had asked for no cell phone service because I was kind of, I was dealing with some situations with some people in my life where I was just, you know, like getting a little too involved with my phone and like, Oh, are they going to respond? And like trying to have these forced communications. And so I wanted to have no phone service so that I could, take a step back and just rebalance, reorient myself, be in nature, be with art, be with like-minded people. Um, and so I had no cell phone service. Um, and then I was like, oh, you know, it'd be really cool if a DJ or a band just, you know, had me come up on stage and rap for them. <laughs> and that happened. Um, and then, yeah, I just asked for balance and, and to be reoriented and like back in my center. And, and that happened as well. Um, I got a lot of good painting done, you know, I got to musically jam with some people I met some some new people um and then there was a few people who had, like we were Facebook friends you know was stalking each other's Facebooks for a few months and I actually finally got to meet them at this festival um so that was cool and then just some new people that came into my life completely new at the festival as well so that was really cool um, that sounds like all the um boxes checked for a really good weekend yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, it was it was kind of cool because uh, I brought my my best friend with me, um, and uh, we'd never been to a festival together. Uh, we actually just reconnected a few months ago because I moved back to the the area that she's at after being away for so long. And um, so I was like, "Yo, I know you like festivals or did this at one point in your life. Like, come to this festival with me." Um, and so she did. And we met these two guys at the festival and like she clicked with one and I clicked with the other. And just like the four of us just had a really good time all weekend. And it was just like perfect. It was like, you're here with your best friend. I'm here with my best friend. Like, you're cool. Like, we're all cool. Like, it was, it was like really synchronistic <laughs> and enjoyable. 
And then um, talking about the synchronicity of the things that you intended coming uh, coming to pass, I feel like it really jives well with some information I was hearing from a different podcast called um, the Spiritual Head Podcast, which is pretty cool. I just started getting into it. And he was um, presenting some material from, I don't remember what, <laughs> someone who was channeling, I think, an entity or something interesting mm-hmm. like that. And uh, the information was like, the economics of uh, source and the law of attraction and your relation to your ability to manifest things into your life. And basically, if you just ask source for it or ask the universe for it, uh, that means that in the, unlike the other side of consciousness, the, uh, the infinite aspect of yourself, it's already there completely manifest waiting to take form, but mm-hmm. it can't come to you or you can't like, you can't withdraw it from the bank, so to speak, unless you have the uh, the right frequency yourself to match it. But if you yeah. do and you stay in that flow, then um, it's like a vortex of one thing after another coming at you that's exactly as you intend it. Or even if you don't consciously intend it, it's exactly what you would have wanted. So you even have to, you don't even necessarily have to keep doing the asking part. You can just get into like a positive chain reaction. It sounds like like that's kind of what you did at the festival actually. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like just d- divine cosmic, uh, manifestation, just like alignment. Maybe that's the word I'm looking for. Just everything fell right into place as it needed to. Um, and I even, I even sold a little bit of merch without trying. Um, one of the other vendors just offered to uh, host some of my merch at his table because I was honestly just feeling kind of lazy and didn't want to set up my vending tent. Um, and I was like, sure, yeah, you know, like take a few stickers off the top, take, you know, a little cut off the top, you know, if you sell anything. And he actually sold some stuff for me. So that was really cool um, and really nice of him too uh, to offer that so that I could just kind of, you know, run around and rap on stage, paint, <laughs> not have to be stuck in a tent. That so. is really cool. It's, uh, you know, like to be able to have true freedom, it does kind of require that we are there for each other in, in small and large ways like that. It's cool that you had that opportunity. And it's like whenever I've ever tried to sell artwork at festivals, um, there's a certain level of hustle that's too much and you just like don't enjoy your life there. And then you go, <laughs> why am I selling art here? If not to be here and enjoy being here and mm-hmm. help fund that. So if, <laughs> you definitely can't go too far in one direction. And even it seems like just plain not worrying about it in my experience is even better than somewhat hustling. Like just kind of make sure that people have the opportunity to get it from you and that you're like ready whenever like, you know, the opportunity knocks, but not to, uh, not to just like be a slave to it, I guess. Cause then all of a sudden it's not even about the art or about the experience that you're there for. It's, or about a message that you're sharing with others. It's about how can I get money from as many people as possible? And that's kind of what we're trying to get away from with the transformational festival, uh, scene. And it's one of the things I see art as being most valuable for in that it's, uh, actually what we could use as a future form of currency because it has potentially infinite value as opposed to our uh, money system that is only a debt-based value, which is actually negative value. Yeah, exactly. Um, And I've noticed also just in, in my own hustle, I guess, because at this point I'm, I'm just making money off of my art and I I do work for um, painting with a twist, which is like a, Oh, we have that in our town. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I teach the classes for that, um, and that's kind of more of my stable income. Um, but then I also do supplement other income from art. Um, and I've noticed that like when I'm trying too hard to make money, then it doesn't happen. But then when I kind of let go, and I'm just like, oh, you know, like blah blah blah. Then I was just like, hey, I want to buy something. Hey, I want to buy something. Hey, I want a commission. Blah, blah blah. And it just all starts to work out. So it's like you got to have that balance of like being consistently like producing stuff and consistently like making content, show it like growing as an artist, you know, showing that it's worthwhile to invest in your path basically. And like taking the step back and just being kind of chill about it. Just going with the flow. 
And you have to actually, one thing that's tempting for artists that are starting out, and I have this problem, I'm still a starting out artist too, uh, is wanting to give people your art just because you want them to have it so bad. Or, uh, and that's not always wrong to do, but if you are trying to like make your way off of it and make a living off of it and attune yourself to the frequency of someone whose livelihood is their art, apart from um, not giving it away all the time uh, you know, or uh, not valuing it highly enough, which is another poss- a very strong possibility, um, having the strong desire to make money off of it, wanting in, in general, is actually attuning you to the concept of not having the money. And because if you yes. want it, that means you don't have it. And if you're reacting to what is in the external reality, which is the situation of I don't have any money right now, um, then what you're actually doing is being controlled by the past because as you perceive that that's what it is, it's already past. So if you want it to be something else, then you need to... Um, Literally, you need to change your mindset about it in completely. And I guess not worrying about it is a way of doing that because worrying about it in general is the like tuning yourself to not having it. So, yeah, I, I guess that's the uh, the lesson. Actually, you shouldn't mm-hmm. give a fuck at all. <laughs> yeah, I Just had an artist art. friend, an artist friend, tell me once, uh, worrying is just asking or praying for what you don't want. Yeah. So like when you're worrying about, cause it's the universe just sees energy as energy. So when you're putting, when you're worrying about something or you're ruminating about something, that's not necessarily what you want, but uh, you're still putting it out there and you're still putting enough energy behind it that it will probably manifest, you know, and it, it's, it's basically just the opposite side of putting out like what you do want out there, you know? So, so what you do is you just set up, all of the places that you need to set up that give you the opportunities to grow and to get income and all that. And then just let it grow and tend to it as you need to and water it like in terms of like your online presence, trying to work on a a better website or something, which is something I'm going through. Um, You just take the steps that you know, because once you get started on this journey as a, a creator, um, you basically have an infinite number of quests appear at just as quickly as you complete one. There will be two or three more things that you realize that you could do that would help out your situation. And you're never going to run out of those ideas. And they're going to keep flowing to you as quickly as you actually execute the ones that are good ideas. You don't necessarily need to do every idea you have. But yeah, um, it's, it's kind of interesting because people that haven't become initiated on this path don't see it that way. They see it as like um, kind of one big insurmountable mountain of work or impossible um, changing of their self to get Mm -hmm. from point A to point B, which is, I guess, like some perfected state of being whatever it is that they dream about being. But in reality, the only place that you can be that's not stuck in point A is on the path towards point infinity because it doesn't actually have a point (laughs) yeah yeah it's like uh when people ask about like my work or my process it's just there's too many ideas and sketches that I have for how much time there is to paint them like there's just not enough time to paint all of the things I want to (laughs) paint that's a good problem to have it is a good problem to have (laughs) I actually don't get like with my with my art, I don't really get that kind of uh, inspiration because I don't have enough of a daily practice with it. And I think that's what the most beneficial thing maybe about having a lot of momentum of working on whatever it is that you're crafting uh, really mm-hmm. regularly, like every day, even if it's just for a little bit, is that whenever you're in the in-between stages, your mind will give you, a, it'll generate a lot more imaginative thoughts because it's tuned to the frequency of creation it's like the muse won't come to your door unless you're you know already doing what it is that she cares about mm-hmm. yeah and I've, I've gotten into the habit of uh and it's been i haven't really been doing it lately just because i was event 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 um but i try to at least sketch something every day 
and I've been focusing my art more so on just the process rather than on like, oh, I have this concept that I want to try to, you know, portray in an artistic form. So it's like, oh, I just have this seed of an idea. So I'll start with that and then just kind of keep going with it and just keep going with it and making the process of creation more of the focus of the work rather than some concept that I'm trying to intentionally symbolize. That's actually how I do it too. Um, But for me, it's like just mad doodles that, uh, (laughs) that, yeah, yeah, just totally. I mean, I do see some of that in some of your pieces as well, actually a bit of a um, sort of a chaotic, but also um, well-structured flow. Cause it's like, once you start laying down kind of, epic doodles you and you keep doing it regularly you start learning different ways that you can layer and shade and make like little extra steps to the process will just kind of come to you one project at a time until 10 projects later your process is completely revamped and way more detailed and um high high tech looking and Mm -hmm. you didn't necessarily plan those kind of developments at any point and the work that itself was actually just sort of a vehicle for those developments to emerge. And then what, a, you know, what was left on the canvas afterwards, or for me, it's a page because I do marker stuff. It's mm-hmm. just like the testament of that journey. Yeah. And something um, as far as like the transformation of the process that I've noticed recently is I've kind of shifted the type of friend groups that I've been spending more of my leisure time with. Um, and so, you know, I mean, of course I'm, I'm very involved in the art community and I, I spend a lot of time with a lot of creatives, both in art and music, et cetera. Um, but lately I've been spending my non-art time with a lot of like engineers and programmers and very science left brain minded people, mathematicians. And I noticed after that, that my work has started to get a lot more mathematical, um, just like some of my newer sketches and newer pieces are like, you know, there's like mathematical architecture involved or just like ratios, just like hard lines of uh, like terraces and stuff like that. Um, Like almost like engineering sketches (laughs) and whatnot mixed with my, you know, flowy psychedelic pipeline, surrealism kind of style. Eyeballs, yes. I like it though. That's that's my favorite. (laughs) I've been moving away from the eyeballs and into more of just like the pure shapes, and I've been re-adding my landscapes, um, and and working with uh, the mechanical and the organic, kind of combining the two. So you have like a face, but then like the lines that make up the geometry of the face are coming out of it, but it's still like the face. But then you know you get some swoopies around it that are followed by some very harsh planes and stuff. So that kind of juxtaposition is a great way to um, invoke a balanced creation. Mm-hmm. To, and what's good about that kind of artwork is if it stimulates the person who's looking at it in a left brain, right brain balanced way, that's actually what allows art to give somebody a like, aha, epiphany, transcendent moment. Uh, experience when they look at it because most people are actually extremely imbalanced in their left or right brain or even in some cases imbalanced towards both sides as crazy as that sounds and uh, (laughs) anything that can for for the most part though they're just stuck completely left brain so um, whenever there is a balanced left brain right brain approach to the work itself it allows them to kind of have an entryway into thinking about it and um it can help them start to look at it symbolically and then boom, all of a sudden their right brain tingled and they haven't felt that for a long time because all they watch is like (coughs) cable news or something and they worry about who's president and stuff like that. (laughs) Oh, don't remind me. You know, I've forgotten for almost the whole day. (laughs) It's an ongoing joke. A few of my friends and I have just like when somebody mentions it and then we're just like, wow, I almost went a whole day forgetting reality of our situation thank you (laughs) to me it's not a true reality uh it's a joke as i just portrayed it (laughs) yeah oh yeah nobody's my boss there's no such thing as authority that's actually a complete illusion it's uh Mm -hmm. 
one of the religions that humanity needs to get past. Yeah, one of the the dogma structures that keep people's minds right in there instead of just, you know, everywhere. Everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Everywhere. Um, And really, it is as weird as that might sound to somebody, it is actually possible to have experiences like that where um, for fleeting moments or even long, long periods, you can actually feel yourself in everything around you. And mm-hmm. um, whether that's through like a, some kind of consciousness altering plant medicine or even spontaneous experiences, or for me, it actually happens when I'm meditating because I do it on purpose. You, if you like meditate outside, I think you should try this, guys. Um, listen to like all the birds and the weird sounds and cars going past and the wind and the trees and try to listen to every single sound simultaneously. and um, without thinking about it, judging it, or even wondering about any of it, and just try to take it all in simultaneously. And uh, that's a really good way to feel that expanding out to everything um, state of consciousness in an organic way. Yeah, yeah, that is, it's really, I do that actually, we have a park just down the street from our house, and it's, you know, it's right on a road, so you get some city noises, And then there's, you know, lots of trees around in a creek and everything. I love to just sit there and do exactly what you're talking about. Um, And sometimes uh, this actually happened at our uh, full moon gathering over the weekend. Uh, We're all sitting around this big fire and I was just kind of sitting there just like meditating and like taking everything in. And then suddenly I started to get a little bit ahead of everything. So I was like, you know, I'd like, get this like message of like, I don't know, what's your favorite color? And then two seconds later, somebody would be asking somebody else, what's your favorite color? It was like, just kind of this like, da 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 like sort of rhythm where I'd be like receiving something and then it would manifest just a few moments later, right in front of me. And it was like, this is, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. And, and it was like, it really, can only happen when you're like you said when you're not judging it or like trying to think about it too much you just kind of accept it and like let it be and then it happens and then it's like whoa that was cool (laughs) yeah it's like it allows you to go whoa that was cool it even encourages that but if you start to go what the hell was that or be it like slightly freaked out it's like oh shut it down Mm -hmm. the armoring the armoring comes back in the pineal gland Uh, I've been battling with that for like a good two years. Um, every once in a while it'll like start to really crack. And then I'll be like, for some reason I'll, uh, have some kind of like internal fear that right then comes out and blocks me and is like, don't do it. Don't open that thing. But Mm -hmm. sometimes it does actually just, um, pop open a little bit (laughs) and you get like some kind of expanded consciousness view of, of reality. But uh, for me, what happens is things just kind of like swirl and uh, it's almost like things are slowing down and um, getting brighter and more vivid. And then usually after like 30 seconds of that, I feel freaked out enough and I uh, I go back to, I go back down to normal frequency. Yeah, It happens a lot whenever I'm, um, when I'm rock climbing, if I get up on the wall and like hang and let my spine crack and expand all the way, that's one mm-hmm. thing that causes it to happen as well. I think it causes some kind of like brain fluid release or something crazy. Right. It just kind of opens up the space in your back. Um, Especially with the way that we live our lives is very hard on our backs. And so then opening it up just kind of allows that energy flow to be a little bit more smooth traveling. You're not hitting all these little lumps and bumps in the road per se. Um, I had an experience in a bathroom once as just like at a bar with some friends and I, I don't drink alcohol, but I just, you Hey, know, me neither. <laughs> I just, I'm always the, the one, you know, you need a ride. Hey, you know, like, a little sober Sally over here. Um, and I, I like it. It's really fun to be the sober one watching everyone else kind of spiral <laughs> out. Uh, <laughs> um, but so I went to the bathroom and before I left the stall, I just kind of started staring at the door. Um, and it started to do this little like wavy kind of thing, like very psychedelic kind of onset sort of feeling. Um, 
And I just kind of was staring at it like, oh, this is queer. All right, <laughs> let's see. And so then I'm like, maybe I can pit, put my hand through the door. Just had this thought, like, maybe I can, like, put my hand through the door. And I like, got, like, right up to it. And then, like, I got right about there just like a few centimeters away and then yeah it clicked in my brain where I was like no it's physical and then I hit it I was like oh it was so close <laughs> so close if we really are <laughs> generating everything through our imagination then I I feel like there has been a time when a human being has actually forgotten that they just plain can't put their hand through walls and they've done it and there's lots of anecdotal stories about that kind of thing happening to people when they're getting abducted by aliens or mm -hmm. fairy folk or the um, even there's even stories of that happening when people are abducted by seeming like um, black ops, weird shadow government, military abductions. Like X-Files stuff. Yeah. They're all kind of connected though. I think. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, I, have these vivid memories from childhood um, where like when my mom was home and I or away and I was sick uh, and home by myself, I just like fly through the house, just like take it do a little running start and just, whoosh, just like fly for a short distance through the house or like down the stairs or something. I have these like really vivid memories of that. Um, so maybe those were dreams, but maybe they weren't. I have I dreams like, like that a lot, but I've actually, I've actually personally experienced lifting up and out of my body whenever <laughs> I was trying to go to sleep and just like whatever mechanism makes you just black out whenever you go to sleep, it didn't kick in for me. And it's mm -hmm. happened a few times. And then all of a sudden I'm floating in my room and I just flew around my house, just like you described. So it's kind of weird because it wasn't a dream because I never lost consciousness and it was the real world that I was in but I was out of my body. So maybe I know as children, we have a lot higher ability to do that and we do it a lot more often. So maybe, who knows, maybe you didn't even go to sleep and you were just like, I'm going to jump out of my body and fly around the house a little bit. <laughs> Mom's yeah, not home to catch me. <laughs> it's definitely a possibility. Um, I've had that experience too and I can induce it pretty well in myself now where I can, um, do that thing where you separate and you don't black out once you go into sleep. You just kind of separate from your body and astral project a little bit. I have this gnarly habit of astral projecting into other people's bodies when I fall asleep sometime. Um, and there's been a few times where I've astral projected into other people's dreams and then woke up as them. And, and like, I'm completely lucid as, you know, MJ. But I'm just like, wait, where am I? <laughs> What's going on? Like, I'm looking at a clock and it's not morphing. So this isn't a dream. And then I'll wake up in my body and I'll look at a clock and be like, okay. So somebody somewhere else is doing that, apparently. <laughs> wow, that's it's, not even necessarily people you know. No, it's it's never somebody I know. <laughs> Which is, is, I almost wish that it would happen to somebody I know. So I could just call them and be like, I know what you did in your dream last night because I was there. <laughs> You could probably develop that actually and like mm -hmm. uh, learn to remote view people on purpose if you really wanted to. Oh, then yeah. I like a spy. I've read some articles. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. I've read some really interesting articles about like astral, astral projection, like sex and stuff like that, or like astral projection dream sex, where you can like learn to astral project into someone's dream and like be physically intimate with them. I mean, obviously, you, you know, you need to ask for consent before because that's a thing. But they're doing um, <laughs> so they'll probably be like, sure. <laughs> well, you should ask for consent in the waking world before oh, you attempt yeah, that you're because right. it will be to them appear as, as a sex dream, but to you it'll be, no, this is an astral projection kind of sexual experience. Um, which I've always found to be kind of interesting. Like, hmm, can, can do that without having to, like, actually do anything? Oh, that sounds great for my lazy personality. There's lots <laughs> of advantages to that. No way to get an STD as far as yeah. I know. There are no spiritual STDs. And especially oh, I not think the, there's worst a few. the worst STD of all, which is children, could not happen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, not, I'm just kidding. <laughs> children are our future. They're so important. But, you know. They are. I don't. 
<laughs> we don't need I that. Personal, I personally don't want children of my own. I'm very, very there's motherly. Enough but... children already. Exactly. There, there's enough children in the world that need homes. So, um, and and honestly, I I am satisfied in my natural maternal instincts through my art because I build my own frames, I stretch my own canvases, I prime them, put my intentions into them, nurture them like my children. I bring them to life. I create them. I cover them up with protective layers when they're done, and then I show them off to the world. You know, and so it kind of gets all of that out. And I, I honestly feel like I just, I wouldn't want to have a child because, you know, once you have a child that, that is your whole life. And my whole life is dedicated to my art. And that wouldn't be fair to another human being because my art will always come first. (laughs) So just overly dedicated to my craft. So out of respect for the work it takes to be a mother and to nurture children. I wouldn't, I choose not to do that because I have something else in nurturing. So do you, do you hear that universal infinite self vortex of a law of attraction stuff? Don't give us any kids. Neither of us need that. And thank you. <laughs> we are not attracting that. <laughs> thank you. Yes. We appreciate not having them. Right. That is our frequency. <laughs> And I've, I've noticed, like, um, I've dabbled in a few dating situations here and there uh, lately, and everyone that I seem to be attracting doesn't want children, so that works out very well. Uh, there was a phase of my life where everyone that I was attracting wanted children, and it was just kind of awkward, like, I, I really love and care about you, and you really love and care about me, but... We're at an impasse here, so what do we do? I guess we'll just play it by ear, and then, you know, eventually things didn't work out for the better. Um, and so the problem never never really <laughs> I wanna presented back- itself. I want to backtrack slightly and talk yeah. about how, how you're making all of your uh, own canvases and how dedicated you are to, like, a really um, personal process of how you're doing your art. And... One thing I would say about that is that's a perfect example of how whatever it is that you know how to do and you feel like you would like doing, that's the thing you should do with your art. Mm -hmm. There's not like a right process. The process will come to you as you just repeatedly do it over and over again. Right. Um, And I've been on my painting journey for about three years. I'm coming up. That was what I was about to ask. Perfect. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, about three years coming up to the switch into year four. So coming to the end of year three um, in October. Um, And it's within that time, I've, I've developed a process that I'm really happy with right now. And it's very egregious. (laughs) Um, It's very meticulous. And I, I actually have been intending to do a, a time lapse of it just to show people how much goes into it because when I explain it people are like wow that just sounds like a lot and it's like yeah well but then you see the finished thing and you think it's really cool and you feel it that's why you feel it because you know I uh because I there's so started- much there's literally energy put into it with each little step that you're taking sorry to interrupt but uh oh, yeah, yeah you're fine I understand what you mean um it's a lot larger of an energetic container than a small little piece of square canvas or a rectangular canvas. Exactly. And uh, I actually just uh, started dabbling with this maker space. So maker space is uh, a place where there's a bunch of different tools and things for you to use to make things uh, a space for making maker space. Um, and so this maker space that I've been uh, dabbling with, they have like a woodworking shop they have a metalworking shop a whole bunch of stuff and so now that i have access to the right tools i want to start actually cutting the wood for my own frames um rather than just buying the stretcher bars and then building it um so i'm about to take my process to a new level of complete creation which i'm really excited about but um aside from that yeah it's i i put all all the pieces together you know stretch the canvas and then for my gessoing or my priming process, I, I put three or five, depending 
layers of gesso. And the reason I do those numbers is because three is number of creation and five is the number or three is like the spiritual number of creation. And then five is like the physical number of creation. Um, Salvador Dali has an essay on the number five. You have five senses. You have five fingers on each hand. You have five things on your face. You in, know, the, in the occult, it's symbolized by the pentagram or the pentacle. Mm -hmm. In yep. tarot, the pentacle represents the actual physical wealth and prosperity of the earth. And then in the occult, the pentagram, whenever it's right side up, represents the five points of the four elements underneath the fifth element of spirit, which is the top point. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So um, that's why I use those two numbers, but I do three coats of gesso usually, or five, if it's a really thin material, because sometimes I don't use canvas because I don't have it. Um, <laughs> bed sheets work very well. Um, <laughs> uh, and then in, in between each layer, I sand it down. So it gives it this really nice, smooth, silky kind of texture. And I actually learned that trick from Randall Roberts and Morgan Mandela. Ooh. They were doing a live my video. Podcast hit list. Oh, they're they're wonderful people. I love them so much. Um, but they were doing a live video one time and I was just like, hey, let's talk about gesso. And then Morgan was just like, yeah, you know, we we gesso our canvases and you know sand them down in between each one. And I was like, I'm gonna try that. And it's a really, it, I love it. So, you know, give them credit for that part. Um, and then once I do that, I, I do a whole underpainting technique that's kind of, I do it with acrylic paint, but it's actually an old oil painting technique called the Mish technique, where you go through your underpainting with burnt sienna and, and then you do all your highlights in white. And then you glaze over the whole thing with yellow and you bring them out again with white. And then you glaze over the whole thing again with blue and you bring them out, the whites out again. And then you add in your colors. And what it does is it makes your colors look more realistic. So um, you, the cones in your eyes receive colors in red, yellow, and then blue. So when you put that underneath your painting, then your eyes going to receive the colors of the painting, how you would receive the colors of something in physical so it gives it wow. that like realistic look to it. And I've noticed that doing that with acrylics keeps the color integrity of the paint since acrylic paint dries oh, yeah, slightly that's a different. Problem. Yeah, but it actually keeps it. And because I use a gloss glazing medium when I paint with acrylics, it adds a lot of that like glossy texture to it. So it looks wet. So it looks like oils. People think my acrylic paintings are oil paintings all the time. It's just like, fooled you again. <laughs> I'll be coming back to this podcast to learn a couple of the things that you're talking about and to go look things up uh, for my own painting. Because when I do occasionally do that, uh, of course, I'm not growing my own hemp and weaving it into a canvas. And uh, no, I'm just oh, kidding. I'm quite <laughs> not there yet. No, that's next, right? No, that's next. But I'm not right, doing all right. those extra steps. Um, I'm actually pretty low on steps in my process altogether. So it'd be cool to take a few pages from your book. And the reason uh, why I say that is because I feel like if anybody's thinking um, and has been thinking about starting an endeavor creatively or wanting to maybe start on the road towards becoming an artist or, or anything that you are wanting to do, and you felt discouraged from starting because you think there are already so many good people doing whatever that is that you could never be them, you should remember that the more of us are engaged in a practice like art or um, hula hooping or anything, the better we all get at it more quickly. And in fact, the more people that are masters at a craft, the more people you have to learn from and to mix and match things that you've learned with your own unique, innovative ideas. And every creation you make, regardless of how many other people are creating something with the same medium, is going to be a unique creation that only you could have pulled forth. So really, the more of us that are doing something, the better all of us have a, at a, a shot at, at creating even more amazing expressions of the infinite. So um, yeah, like that's just what you made. You kind of inspired me to think about that, whatever you're telling me, oh, learning you. from uh, Randall and, and, I, and Morgan Mandala. Um, we all have so much that we can... Uh, learn and teach even those of us who don't real like who aren't in a position where we've gained wisdom about something to the point where we can't teach but you have the that potential is within you as well and like we all need to be those things for each other 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I mean, and I'm self-taught. I never went to art class or art school or anything like that. And I've, I've learned just by watching people, just, you know, like by watching Randall and Morgan or, you know, watching uh, friends or just, you know, YouTube videos of like live painters or live, live painters at festivals. I'm just kind of picking up some things like, oh, you do this thing. I'm going to see what that's like. Uh, you know, oh. You know. If you care, you'll figure it out. So the first step is to invoke your care and like whatever that leads you to follow that because whatever, right. you care, whatever it is that is interesting or you care about um, like podcasting completely self-taught uh, you could teach yourself to do that. I, I know many people who never took a music production class that make the weirdest awesomest shit ever. So mm -hmm. really um, we're in the age of information and ignorance is a choice ignore yeah. it. So it means you're ignoring. <laughs> you could learn anything that you want. That's kind of like my theme of this podcast is that you could be whatever you want. There's really no limiter. Yeah. Other than I can't be Spider-Man, unfortunately, and <laughs> a lot, but I'm going to figure out a way. You'll, you'll figure it out. I mean, it just manifests. You'll, you'll get there. You'll get it, there. Well, the, everything does manifest that you ask source for, but because it's a quantum computer that we're in, uh, that means that things work in quantum effects, uh, which is by amounts. And if something has an in extreme improbability of happening, then it might take a very long amount of time for it to actually line itself up to happen, including maybe multiple lifetimes later. So, you know, be careful what you die being attached to, I guess. <laughs> yeah, really. I need to run and grab my phone charger really quick. I just got the notification that my phone is inching towards its own death. Okay, we'll pause real quick. Sounds good. Okay, we are back. Um, since you kind of moved and reshoveled, I was actually <laughs> planning on in the intro, I'm going to um, be putting, if you're watching this as a video anyway, there will be artwork in the video during the uh, intro to the podcast, which you've already seen by now. But since you're right by your stuff here in your studio, maybe you can give <laughs> us a little quick tour using your phone and uh, sure. show us some of your work. Let's see. Is there a swivel camera option? or Oh, I think there is. Yeah, yeah. Yay! You can be on the other side. Hey. All right. So what do we got going on back here? This painting is almost done. It's one of those that I started it about a year ago, and so now I'm afraid to call it done, but because I can always do more, <laughs> but I'm not sure. So it's it's potentially finished. I'm not sure. Can, can you, you see it? it clearly? Oh yeah. Okay, it's very like fuzzy on my little tiny screen. That oh wow, there we go. Now I can see it. Um, this is called "In the Flow of the Divine Feminine." It is oil on canvas. Here, I guess I can kind of give you a nice little pan through. Yeah, so I started this at my birthday party last October. <laughs> You're really right. That does look like oils. That's amazing. No, this is actually oils. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is actually oils. Um yeah, this is this is an oil piece. It's only within 2017 that I've really been dabbling with acrylics. This one behind it is also oils, um, and it's still very much in progress. Um, this one is called Awakening to the Other Self. I saw um, that on Instagram and got pretty soaked on that one. <laughs> yeah, it's a part of a seven painting series called the Awakening Series that I've been trying to work on but all these acrylic paintings just keep happening instead of the one the ones I started <laughs> um so the the whole idea behind the awakening series is just kind of the step-by-step -step process of coming coming into conscious awakening I suppose um so the first one is awakening of self which isn't here right now um and that one's done uh, you've probably seen it. It's the lady, she's in prayer pose. She's got triangle pipeline stuff coming out of her head and some you know, dolly landscape going on, a little pot in the bottom. Uh, and then this is the second one, awakening to the other self. And then up here, we've got awakening to the higher self, uh, self-explanatory. Um, and then over here, we've got awakening to the matrix, uh, 
is number four in progress. Wow. And those are the four that I have on canvas. Five and six are in sketchbook form. And seven, I'm not even there yet in my own development, so I have not conceived it yet. Um, but five is awakening to uh, the demonic realms. Six is awakening to the heavenly realms. And then seven is awakening to infinite consciousness. And then over here, this is actually not that orientation, this orientation. I'll just throw it right there. This is called, uh, there we go. Um, get my charger out of the way there. Uh, this is called Winter Solstice in Retrograde. So I thought it would be kind of cool to make an artistic representation of the fact that last winter, uh, Mercury retrograde started on the winter solstice. Um, that doesn't happen very often. So I started this painting kind of with that in mind. Um, and uh, so you can see like the sun coming out of the, the ice breaking free as the winter solstice rep is representative of um, and then the wheel of transformation, uh, which is another symbol of winter solstice, but the wheels being broken and absorbed up by mercury over here, all this crazy mercury retrograde funness. So it's not quite done yet. I haven't picked it up since the last retrograde. So a couple weeks here, I'll be picking it back up. Uh, this one's also oil. Um, yeah. I wouldn't Maybe. know where to go with that. It looks so great how it is. But I, <laughs> I know what you mean. Whenever it's not done, you know it's not done. So you just uh, mm -hmm. you come yeah, back to I, it when you can. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, was working on it really diligently last retrograde. And I got to a point where I had no idea where to go from where it is. Um, and I'm still not entirely sure. I considered bringing this one to my festival, but... I'm kind of doing that cautious procrastination of, you know, it's not Mercury retrograde yet. So I'm not. I like the pyramids on it as well in the bottom left there. Over here. Thank you. Yeah. I've, I've gotten some hit or misses on those from friends like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Oh, those are cool. Oh, no, no, no. It, it doesn't fit. No, it's a good else. symbol for what Thank you're you. actually <laughs> representing. It fits in with that. Thank you. Yeah. Mercury and the pyramids are highly interrelated. Mercury being. Um, uh, Her Hermes to the Egyptians, I guess, uh, is what they call him. And he was a really big deal. They call him Thoth, actually, more than Hermes. Yeah, Thoth. Greeks called him Hermes. I mixed that up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was kind of some subconscious symbolism there, actually. Uh, <laughs> and then the hummingbird kind of coming out of there, just my own little trademark. Uh, I think where it, what it, it makes me think about is how um, the periods of seeming darkness, like winter solstice is, you know, it's uh, entering into the darker days of the year, right? Mm -hmm. And you have uh, Mercury in retrograde, which is, which is in astrology, if you're not familiar, that usually portends that there will be some kind of difficult experiences occurring in your life during that period. Um, but the pyramids are actually a symbol of initiation into higher consciousness because that was their actual purpose, not any of these other crazy things yep. people say about them. Uh, and so what it represents to me is that in these dark periods, um, the teacher, which is Mercury, actually leads us into our initiation through what is, uh, you know, seemingly from our 3D Earth's perspective, uh, hard times, but you have to have the hard times to um, then grow forth into new things. And then just in the same way that you have to have dark soil for uh, plants and life to grow out of it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So those will, those will get done eventually. <laughs> yeah. And uh, another interesting thing about mercury retrograde is it is definitely uh it's a transformative event It's very transformative. It's a catalyst catalytic. All the retrogrades are catalytic. Mercury is just the one that happens the most often. So it's the one that people focus on more, but actually right now, Neptune is in retrograde until, Oh, in September, October, some, something like that. It's been in retrograde for 
a little while now. Um, and so what that one means, uh, and it's pretty easy to kind of figure out what it means per planet, just if you study a little bit about the planets and what they represent, and then take that into like a, a transformative growth aspect. That's, that's pretty much how it works. Um, for the spiritual side of it. Uh, so for Neptune, Neptune's the dreamer. Neptune's the ruler of the unconscious, the unknown, the dreamy, idealistic. It, it rules over the sign of Pisces, um, if that makes sense. Um, I'm half Pisces. You're half Pisces. I am right on the edge of Aries and Pisces. Oh, you're one of those, are you? Which side are you on, though? I'm on the airy side, just barely. You're on the airy side, okay. Three twenty-two skull and bones. Uh, <laughs> I just met uh, somebody who was the twenty-first the other day, actually. Um, it. Sorry, I just kind of cut off your astrology uh, explanation, but um, I have definitely felt the uh, the retrograde aspect of my unconscious in effect because. Uh, more maybe more than other people because like in this period that has been going on i've actually been having trouble even accessing my dreams which uh more than normal which would make sense i guess for a Mer or a neptune retrograde mm -hmm. and it also uh in the physical and this has been kind of more of how i've been experiencing it um and some other people that i i've talked to um so like when you have those experiences where you're, you're intentionally not seeing everything that's there. So, so, you know, you got like, I guess we'll say like you got, you're in a relationship and you're kind of putting that veil up of like, Oh, things are great when they're not necessarily, or like, you know, there's something that needs to be addressed. Neptune in retrogrades that time when the veil is just taken off and now you have to address it and it'll stand the test of time or the test of the truth, when did that uh, which start? is time. Um, it started right after the summer solstice, actually, I believe. Yeah, it started right after the summer solstice and it goes until I want to say October, but it might even be November. It's, it's a couple months, um, of Neptune in retrograde. Um, and I remember because I had just started, uh, seeing someone right around the solstice time and had made a note like, Oh, Neptune's going into retrograde. We'll see if this works out. Uh, <laughs> and and it, we just decided to stay friends, uh, but we're still good friends. So, um, you know, no harm there was done on either side, but uh, it's definitely been an interesting experience. So I'm a very overly romantic person, an overly idealistic person. So um, in some of those aspects of life and growth, it's been very, it's been a very interesting Neptune retrograde uh, for just like seeing things as they are um, and being honest about them and not trying to you know, just be like, Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, that one thing we can just look over and just be like, no, that one thing is, is a thing that we should discuss and really bring the light. Um, and it, it always, it always helps to have the conversation. This is something I've been repeating a lot lately, maybe not on the show, but to even have a conversation um, etymologically, the word, or actually we'll even go to green language, which is like heart, uh, left and right brain balance language where you you interpret a word to its fullest extent with your imagination um, mm -hmm. so conversation is where you con which is latin for with or together and then verse which is from the latin versare which is to turn or to change and then um, at i on which means at the point where the third eye is on or the all-seeing eye, the one eye of higher consciousness that connects all of us through the fact that we are all actually emanations from that and that our, our experience of isness and, and um, I-ness is from that one eye. We all have the same I-ness to us. Mm -hmm. And whenever we have a conversation, what it literally means is you're able to change from that shared perspective point which means you're going to change for the greatest good uh it's always going to be better to have the conversation about something that needs to change and um 
if it's something that feels like it's going to generate controversy, <laughs> the word controversy means um, contra, which is up against or uh, opposed to, and then versi, which is from versare again, which is to mm-hmm. change. So it's opposition to change. So uh, don't be afraid of controversy. <laughs> Just yeah. have the conversations that you need to have because if you do that from a loving and centered and balanced place, then, um, and you don't, you know, you don't, uh, actually try to control the other person or the situation and you don't set conditions on them. You just have a conversation with them from a perspective of unconditional love. Even if that means that you need to change the dynamic that's between you and that person, it will always be, um, it will always go better than you think. In my opinion, I, there may be a few exceptions with really crazy people, but you should just probably not have talked to them in the first place. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right. And I mean, especially if you are staying conscious and centered and having that conversation from that love center or that place of unconditional love, then really at that point, you know, even if that person is having a strong negative reaction or seemingly negative op- opposing reaction to whatever the conversation or the controversy is, um, it it is good. It is you know, for their growth, if they're, if they're, uh, becoming angry or just intense about it, um, that means that there's something within them, within their ego that is fighting, uh, fighting with and against whatever this truth is that's coming to light. And so then at that point, you know, it's really just up to them whether they want to accept it or not. And, you know, it doesn't always happen. People don't always accept the truth, but, Eventually, hopefully, in, in, my, in my idealistic world, uh, people do accept that uh, just, you know, they come, people come to a point when enough is enough, you know, enough of whatever this turmoil is that, you know, was set off by this thing. Now I need to address it. Um, so, and I mean, may, I may just be more confrontational and have a lot less patience with misery than others do. Um, but I, I feel like that's kind of how it works, uh, just on a mechanical level. And so it's well, just really, if you're matters. not into, cho- if you don't want to choose victimhood for yourself and you don't want to, uh, and you're not judgmental of the other person, then any, anybody that is able to get past the perspective of this is like happening to me, or I don't want this to change. They, even, even if they can't do it right away, if you're planting those seeds, by coming at them from that frequency yourself, it's very likely that they will eventually, if not pretty quickly change because um, they are a part of the infinite unconscious as well. They are actually an emanation from that other side of the all mind where um, things that you're asking for and things that you are intending for are waiting for you to access. They, different aspects of each person are in that infinite, um, I guess, bank account waiting for you to withdraw as well. And you just have to match that frequency, which is another way of saying, if you spend time doing the work that you need to do on yourself to be the best version of yourself possible, then the world that you find yourself in is going to be surrounded. You're going to be surrounded by people who are doing the same thing for the most part. And then where you're not encountering that is a place where you have the opportunity to using the flashlight of truth to, or the, uh, you know, like maybe it's like rubbing alcohol kind of hurts them that make, might make them mad. It kind of hurts to clean the wound, but like whenever you give somebody the truth, you're always planting a seed that will grow, um, into something good as long as they water it with, uh, I guess their thoughts and with their conviction that, that you were actually right. And if you are coming from a place of knowing right from wrong and, and knowing what's best for you and also loving that person unconditionally, then you will definitely be uh, right, I guess. It will be okay. Right. Um, I I want to uh, make sure that it's okay that we're still on right now because we're a little past the time I was going to keep you. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's totally fine. Cool. Wow. That, that went by really fast. (laughs) Time flies when you're having fun. (laughs) Oh yeah. Um, podcasting is way more fun than people expect because we don't actually have conversations that are in depth with uh, each other like this very often. It's kind of unfortunate for me. Like this is the way that I get them. (laughs) Yeah. 
Yeah, I've been fortunate that I've been uh, meeting people and attracting people that want to have these kinds of conversations more and more and more. So, so this is fortunately becoming more of a of a daily thing or a regular thing to have these kinds of conversations. But um, I do have some very very dear people that you know, that's not the conversation, you know, it's, it's very, it's very, uh, veiled and blanketed, uh, surface level kinds of conversations that you have with most people or that I, you know, have with most people. Um, and it makes me kind of sad because <laughs> I just really want to be able to just do exactly what we're doing here and just sit and open our minds and just kind of spiral and see how far we can go with it. And then there's a lot of resistance in our culture and our society to do that. Um, so we just got to kind of stick together and, and keep doing it, keep the conversations open and just hope that some of those other people kind of hear it and you know, just find their way in or find some curiosity, like allow themselves the curiosity to, to explore the unconscious and, and the extra dimensional, the higher, higher realms and higher frequencies of thought and perception. Uh, I understand it can be scary. It can be very scary because it's an unknown and you, you don't know what you're going to get until you get it, but it's definitely worth it. <laughs> you're definitely throwing that frequency out there big time because I do not like, I, I get on Instagram pretty often and just like, check out random visionary artists or painters or things of that nature. Not like every day, but every once in a while, whenever I'm on there for some other reason, um, I guess because I like to steal screenshots of, of images and edit the shit out of them until they're like a whole different thing and use that for different projects. But um, I don't just like randomly message people on Instagram and say, Hey, I want to do a podcast. Although I should more often clearly because this has been a really good one. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for doing that. Well, when I was just scrolling, whenever I, I got to your page, however that happened, uh, just immediately this strong intuition just popped in my head, message her to come on the show. That would be a good one. And it was, it was a weird, it was weird. It was like a forceful <laughs> intuition that was, uh, so I think maybe that is, that well, actually, a hundred percent, I would attribute that to the uh, vibration that you encapsulate, and that can be translated through, I guess, images. Apparently, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, and uh, the the thing that you're talking about, the having this kind of conversation, um, advancing our conceptions of reality, it's super important because without imaginative conversations and without imaginative individuals like yourself that are creating things that nobody has seen before, then um, people who don't have an activated imagination themselves are really unlikely to come out of their box. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, if we can't imagine a different world, we'll never have it. That's just a fact. That's the way that it works. Um, so it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's what I call the great work to, Express the truth that you understand as you understand it that is universal um, through whatever means that you can communicate it as much as you can, as often as you can, with as many people as you can. And the reason for this is because, like you were saying at the beginning about um, complaints or worrying being a, a form of like praying for shit that you don't want, even if you're just talking about inane random pointless bullshit like what culture programs people to be interested in um all you're doing is sending is sending a uh, withdrawal note to your infinite bank of self experiences that says i want more football games to watch yeah let's just do that ad infinitum <laughs> so right. yeah so we really need to expand our um, imagination through conversations because that's what allows people to start withdrawing different versions of their experience um, pool into their life. And, and music festivals are a big um, part of that for me. And that's actually kind of where I started to get out of the box. Is that maybe something that's true for you? Um, yeah. Uh, music festival is how I found visionary art for sure. I was doing film work uh, in LA and this guy uh, was like, hey, you want to come shoot this documentary where we go to a music festival and just kind of wing it? <laughs> and I was like, something is telling me to say yes to this. So, yeah, sure. 
um, and that music festival was Art Outside 2014. Um, and I believe that the Apex Collective was there and Randall and Morgan were there. And I think even Crystal was there. Um, and maybe like Adam Sive or Seth McMahon, you know, like just like one of the most epic artist lineups that you could ever have was there. And it just like blew my mind. I was like, this is a thing. This is, <laughs> this is my thing. This is my thing. Screw this documentary. This is my thing. Um, and so pretty soon after that, I just, yeah, I bought my first uh, set of oil paints and started painting some little, little things here and there. And then, uh, I had set a goal. I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a live painter at art outside 2015. And that was my first live painting gig. It got hurricaned out. So I didn't really get to, you know, ha ha too much, but I did get a little bit done on my painting there. <laughs> uh, you've, I don't know what your work was like at that point, but I will say for just three years of a journey, um, it's clear that you're divinely inspired that you are, that you truly do care about what you're doing and, um, about, and doing it for the right reasons, because I think that's what allows the universe to. That one back there was that art outside painting. Really? <laughs> this lotus flower one back there. Yeah. Here. Oh, show us, show us real quick. Sorry for oh, people just listening. I'm a, I'm a little tethered to the wall right now, but it's back there. Oh yeah. We can see it. Um, let me, <laughs> let me make it. That was, the, uh, that was the bigger. one. <laughs> Wow. That was great. the one. <laughs> so it hasn't sold yet. So I just keep it as a reminder for where I've, where I've come from, from there to actually, I guess I'll untether myself. Why not? Why not? Here, we'll flip the screen again. Yeah. This is one of those episodes, people, where you probably would enjoy watching it on YouTube um, or yeah, so there's that one. any other video service that you might find me on. Wow, that that's the, great. Thank you. Yeah, so I wouldn't have been able outside. to tell that it's from that long ago. Yep. Um, and then over here is the one that I just worked on over the weekend. So I'll put them side by side. That'll be fun. Obviously, I've changed up my sizes, and now I'm at the point where this one, which is a, it's 26 by 34, so it's slightly shorter than three feet, slightly bigger than two feet. And, um... It's, I'm at the point where now it's too small. Um, when I, you know, at, at Art Outside thought that 16 by 20 was really big. <laughs> so there's that's a nice little side-by-side side comparison. Get bigger paper, get bigger canvases. That's a good advice for any artist, I think. Just go yeah, bigger then, because it lets you get more into the details. <laughs> this one back here that's uh, still in the first underpainting stage is uh, three by five feet. It's the biggest one I have stretched right now. and. Oh, goodness. I haven't really shown the world this, but, you know, you caught me on a good day. So <laughs> I'll uh, give you the, the, the full, full image. So, so this I is my self-portrait. <laughs> wow. Um, I had my heart terribly broken uh, earlier this year. Um, I, I had gotten out of a, a relationship and kind of jumped pretty quickly into a new one, but it was very passionate um, with another artist and uh, really, really loved, love still, love this person. Um, and he, uh, I, I think he did love me too, um, but he had some, some of his own things he needed to work on. And so uh, it was kind of one of those situations where it's like, one day I, I love you. I want to, you know, forever be with you the next day. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm leaving you for someone else. Um, and it really devastated me. Uh, and so at that moment, I just kind of like, it like set me off on a really transformative journey where I just kind of was like, I kept like having this image of like ripping my skull open to unleash my pineal gland and like ripping my pineal gland. Um, Open. That's what's going on in this image, actually. So it's, yeah, uh, and so that's and so that is actually uh, based off of a picture I took of myself, kind of like grabbing my head like that, um, and the pineal gland ripping out, and the hummingbird of transformation uh, coming out through it. And then you've got on the two sides, you've got like these like really angry, like kind of you know they they will become more demonic as I work on them, but like like angry more negative oriented, uh, lower vibrational 
uh, entities and then you've got like more of the peaceful entities. And so then in the middle here, I'm going to like manifest. So, you know, there's going to be like a couple and like some other things, you know, like love and like happy things and painting and like, just like transformative meditating, like Lotus flower, you know, like those kinds of things coming out of this side. And then on this side, like, you know, pain and heartbreak and like chains, the chains of, of your mental traps. And I've, um, I dealt with smoking for a long time. So I was probably going to add smoking in there. Um, like on that side, it was like a self-destructive. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, uh, just like, so all of like the self-destructive things that I've done throughout the years on that side of it. Um, I haven't touched it in a couple months. This is an oil painting as well, by the way, that's an acrylic. Um, and that's an oil. Um, I think that's the only acrylic I have in the studio right now. Um, yeah, but so I haven't touched it in a little while and I'm not really sure what's going to go on in those little fuzzy areas quite yet. Um, I just have kind of been feeling the flow with some of these more like flow pieces. So I haven't really put a lot of time back into this one, but, uh, it's there. <laughs> it started. So that's, uh, essentially my self portrait. <laughs> That's awesome. I I love pieces that have uh, the yin and yang so well represented like that. Uh, Thank you. The duality actually emanating from a unified source. It like to go back to the idea of the uh, the great work of um, expressing truth at all times. That's the light side, and then the other side is you know complaining and dragging your vibration down through, um, or really just letting your vibration be affected by the external world instead of letting your vibration affect the external world. And, uh, you know, like there's two directions yeah. we can go really in there's two directions we can go in consciousness, just that one or the other, um, mm -hmm. up or down. So, um, uh, yeah, that piece is a really cool symbol of that. I Thank think, you. I think I want to, uh, go ahead and ask you for some plugs to wherever people can find you online. Uh, and, I guess get off of this podcast so that I can work on <laughs> releasing another one and editing it. I could keep going, but like I have to uh, schedule my time to keep the production um, schedule right. on, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, understandable for sure. Well, it's been a pleasure and you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at MJ lightning bug and it's E M J A E lightning bug. <laughs> and there will be the links for that in the uh, episode awesome. notes. Yeah, so uh, you can find me there. Um, and then that's that's about it. Thank you so much again for having me. Uh, this has been really, really fun. And I'm, I'm really honored that you asked me to come on based on an intuition. We'll so. do it again if you want. Um, Absolutely. Just give it a couple months. I'm actually in the, new, in the process of making a new website, like I told you about before. And uh, one of the pages that's going to be on there is an artist, like Interverse artist page. And um, so you'll be one of the first people that I'm going to feature as I start adding people to that whenever they come on the show. So that'll be kind of like um, just a permanent link back to your content from my website and a link to the, the episode we did. And then if we do future episodes, I'll post them there too, just kind of organize it on there. But, but yeah, um, I really, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, it, your art is fantastic. Your... Thank perspective you. on this thing that we call consciousness and reality is definitely in line with the uh, imagery that you're putting forth and Thank I you. can feel the spirit of unity coming from you. <laughs> I really appreciate this conversation. It's been great. This is exactly why I do the show. It's actually for cool combos like this that are kind of like music festival-y. Um, you know, I've, I've gotten into a lot of other types of interviews since I started the podcast and I like having diversity but this was like the bread and butter exactly what i want interverse to be about so yeah thank you is there anything awesome. else you want to tell people before we sign off here uh yeah actually i just got in a conversation with this with a homie just two days ago or something so just a friendly reminder um when you have a thought just you know take a second to think about whether that's your thought or if it's coming from somewhere else um remember that you are a uh, perfect, beautiful representation of the one light we all come from. Uh, and any 
other things you may think are truth that don't fall in line with that are not yours. They are falsities from negative entities beyond. Uh, so stay mindful and you know, lots of love and light. If you ever you ever need a little bit of extra love, hit me up. <laughs> I'm awesome. always down to give people love. So yeah, that's that's about it. Thank you again so much. This was so fun. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thanks guys. See y'all next week. Well, guys, that's it. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, you can find links to all the things in the episode notes on my brand new website. Go find MJ online. Her Etsy shop could use a follow. Maybe you could put a few hearts out there for her creations on Instagram. Or maybe like her on Facebook. Better yet, buy a painting. Or if you can't spend the money on a painting... And you just want to uh, spend like one dollar then go support my Patreon instead. Ha ha. I love you guys. Don't forget. I'll be back next week with I don't know who, but somebody good. Have an awesome life till then. And I love you. Goodbye.